morning! We have checked out of our hotel and ordered a taxi to Kyoto Station. Wow, Kyoto Station is huge! We are leaving Kyoto and heading to Osaka on the Hello Kitty train towards Kansai Airport, which will take us approximately an hour and a half to get there. Since our flight to South Korea is early tomorrow, we booked a hotel at the airport. Currently, it's too early to check into our room, so we left our luggage at the reception and now we're going to head to downtown Osaka. Osaka is known as the Kitchen of Japan for its culinary scene featuring specialties like takoyaki, which are octopus balls, and okonomiyaki, which are savory pancakes. Dotonbori District is known for its neon lights and street food. Honestly, the streets are so interesting and fun to look at. I love the creativity of bringing some of these food into 3D art. There were so many takoyaki stands all around us, but we ended up picking the takoyaki stand with the longest line. I guess we thought this must be good if the line is this long compared to the other stands. Jason had to make payment with cash through what appeared to be like a vending machine. Once paid, we got a slip that we had to hand to the worker. While in line patiently waiting for our food, we got to watch them make it fresh which was quite entertaining. They made huge batches and cleared a bunch of orders. We wanted to try everything, so we ordered a variety pack. And it was super hot at first that I almost burned my own tongue, but it was so good once it actually cooled down a bit. Now we will try okonomiyaki, which are savory pancakes that everyone says we must try in Osaka. I swear, I didn't know the server was going to make a cute okonomiyaki. I asked her to write Suzy blog, but she actually caught me by surprise when she drew a rabbit. If you guys haven't noticed, my YouTube picture changed to Coco's picture that I drew on the plane when I was flying to Japan. Wow! 
I promise. Coco's drawing on the pancake was a pure coincidence. Osaka is also great for shopping with areas like Shinsabashi and Umeda offering a wide range of shops. We purposely left out the major shopping till the end so we didn't have to carry too much while moving from city to city. I got to look at different types of bags I want to see and check out the prices with the tax refund. After shopping at LV, we went to check out their cafe. Overall, it was nothing special, just overpriced drinks. I got the matcha latte and it didn't taste that different from other matcha lattes out there. The price for one drink was over $20. I just did this for fun because I happen to be in the area, but I would never actually do this again. Wow, the city is livelier at night. There are so many more people on the street. Well, looks like we're going to head back to our hotel soon because we got to get up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. On our way to our hotel, we realized that we had some money left in our Suica. And as you know, Suicas automatically expire after 28 days and any funds inside a car will be lost forever. So we purposely went to a convenience store by the hotel and bought dinner. We both carefully calculated and looked for items so our balance would end up being zero at the end. Honestly, booking a hotel in the airport was such a good idea. The location is so convenient and we can use a cart to push our bags all the way. 
we booked a budget airline to fly to Korea and Jason paid for additional check bags and food. I was facing some issues where apparently only 7 kilograms of personal items were allowed per person and my carry-on itself with my laptop is 7 kilograms alone. So I had to empty out everything from my carry-on and split them between my 4 check bags. I was annoyed because they made me move everything around and at the end of the day, the weight of the plane that carries all of my things will stay the same. Wow, this plane was so empty. I guess the early morning flights aren't too popular. Well, that's it. I really enjoyed Japan and I hope to be back very soon. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.